The ceasefire is over as Israel and Hamas trade blows all across Gaza, and whether you like it or not, the United States is involved in this war. What's going on, everyone? Let's take a look at some updates as it relates to the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. I'm recording this at 9 a.m. Central on Friday, December 1st, 2023. So the ceasefire has officially ended between Israel and Hamas. Originally, this started as a four-day truce that would allow humanitarian aid into Gaza while hostages held by Hamas were released in exchange for Palestinian prisoners held by Israel. In total, that four-day truce moved to seven days, and 105 hostages held by Hamas were exchanged for 210 Palestinians. Now, over the past 24 hours, both sides have said that the other side violated the ceasefire. What it looks like, however, is that the terms were not met by the deadline, and both Israel and Hamas were ready to get back to the fight, assuming that that fell through. Israel says that beginning at 07 local time, their air force attacked over 200 terrorist targets across Gaza, including tunnel shafts, rocket firing locations, and military headquarters. And Hamas publishing on Telegram uh, saying that they've been launching quite a few rockets and mortars all across uh, Gaza so far today. A handful targeting Israeli troops inside of Gaza, as well as rockets and mortars being fired outside of the Strip into Israeli territory. Now, while it doesn't quite look like a major ground operation has been kicked off by Israel at this point, they have been saying that the second phase of the war is underway. So that is suggesting that they might be targeting a new area of the Gaza Strip or potentially pursuing a different strategy than what we have seen so far. Now, it's really hard to understand what the general sentiment of Hamas is when it comes to the Palestinian people. I'm sure at this point you've probably heard extremes in every direction. Uh, but there's an interesting piece published by Joseph Broad yesterday in the Free Press titled, They Can Go to Hell and Hide There, What Gazans Really Think of Hamas. In that piece, he says, quote, For nearly a generation, media owned by Qatar and Iran have tag-teamed with Hamas to paint a false picture of ideological uniformity across Gaza. They called out a reporter in the Shifa hospital who, when a man began to talk about Hamas hiding amongst civilians, the reporter just walked away. No more questions, right? I'll go ahead and play it here. Additionally, they cited a Gazan civilian who said they block off their streets at night around their house and it's not to protect against Israeli soldiers, but to keep Hamas out. The civilian here said, quote, we know it's Hamas that makes the problems. They're the ones who hide among us, end quote. And then in talking with another patient at Shifa, the reporter here was told, quote, every Palestinian knows that Shifa is full of Hamas, but nobody can talk. Hamas is the destruction of the Palestinian people. We've had enough. They need to be wiped out because if they remain, the people will be wiped out. Again, it's very, very hard to fully understand the level of support that an oppressive regime like Hamas has amongst the people. You just, you never know how many people are just going along because they don't want any trouble versus those that genuinely support the organization, support in this case what they did on October 7th. Now, for all you Americans watching this video thinking that this war is happening over there, there's no American troops on the ground, we're not involved, doesn't affect us. Wrong. One of the warring parties here, a whole side in this conflict, blames the United States. You, me, all Americans are responsible for what is happening in Gaza in the eyes of Hamas and some of their backers. Hamas put out in a statement earlier today, quote, the Biden administration and President Biden in person shoulder full responsibility for the continuation of Zionist war crimes in the Gaza Strip. Our steadfast people facing the U.S.-backed Zionist terror army will prevail. And it's not just Hamas. If you go up north to Hezbollah, their vice chairman of the executive council said, quote, this war from the beginning has been America's war against the Palestinian people. And all American positions in the course of events were indicative of this fact, which is that America is not just a partner, but is the decision maker in the matter. Aggression and Israel is a tool that implements the American decision. 
and then shifting even further out, moving into Iraq. The Islamic resistance in Iraq, which is a broad term for all of the Iranian-backed militias that have been attacking U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria for a while now, uh, they also put out a statement in the last 24 hours. So all of these, one on top of the other, saying, quote, the Zionist massacres and brutal genocide that the Palestinian people were subjected to are part of the cycle of war run by America against the people of Gaza and southern Lebanon. It declares the Islamic resistance of Iraq, declares its readiness and readiness to escalate military operations inside and outside of Iraq if the American enemy insists on the continuation of the Zionist killing machine. Look, this is the kind of language that can drive lone wolf or organized terrorist group attacks against the United States at home or our interests abroad. It's just, I got it. it it's easy to look at this and say, we don't have boots on the ground and we're just having meetings at, at a high level and maybe Biden puts out a statement here or there. That's not how it's viewed from the opposing side. These groups, these organizations, whether they believe it or not, are saying that the United States is the one directly responsible for the devastation in Gaza. It's the United States directly responsible for the Palestinian children who have been killed in this war. And it doesn't really matter if you look at this and say, well, that's not true. It's the Israeli military carrying out operations in Gaza. The U.S. doesn't have boots on the ground at all. You're not the audience. The audience is a group of people who already don't like the United States and is just looking for another reason, the most recent reason, to actually do something about it. Again, this is the kind of language, this is the kind of situation that drives terror attacks in the future. Then a couple days ago, Hezbollah put out a new video showing some of their fighters engaging Israeli positions in the north of Israel, south of Lebanon. Uh, these events would have taken place before the ceasefire, before the seven-day ceasefire. That ceasefire was negotiated between Hamas and Israel. Hezbollah was not a part of that. No other group was a part of that. Uh, but Hezbollah did pretty early on come out and say, hey, if Israel doesn't attack us during the ceasefire, we'll abide by the same terms. And by and large, that appears to have held. There, you know, across Gaza, across Israel, there were some uh, small ceasefire violations, I would say. I call them small because nothing actually broke that truce until the, the seventh day when the terms weren't met uh, just a few hours ago. Hezbollah does appear to, now that that ceasefire and that truce has ended, uh, Hezbollah is back at it. So already today, in just a few hours after that truce was announced over and Hamas began launching rockets and Israel began striking Hamas targets, Hezbollah also initiated attacks, launching at least one, if not more, attacks across the border. What I've seen so far was a mortar attack against Israeli positions in the northwest of the country. And these ATGMs, or anti-tank guided missiles, are, are one of the primary means that Hezbollah is attacking Israeli forces in the north. And, you know, they've got pretty substantial range. It can be pretty accurate, all things considered, guided onto the target. Uh, so what we've seen over the past few weeks is there, there have been mortars and rockets launched. Again, relatively uh, short range. Hezbollah is not targeting things deep inside Israeli territory. It's really, right now, has been focused right along the border. And these anti-tank guided missiles are kind of ideal for that in a lot of ways. Uh, they're able to very accurately and, and relatively effectively strike Israeli guard posts, communication centers, things like that, troop concentrations right along their border with Lebanon. But that's all I got for now. Of course, if interested in national security subjects, be sure to check out the sit reps I put out on Substack. Link is in the description below. Substack now also has ad-free, sponsor-free videos published about one hour before they go live on YouTube. But thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next time.